Hey. Morning. Hey, yeah. Uh, I hope you don't expect me to wear one of them deft hats. <laughs> don't be silly. Let's keep things nice and informal. All right. Uh, shall I call you Tara, then? Lady Tara will be fine. All right. Where to? I've got an appointment with Laura. It's a bit early for all Yard. I believe she's at the solicitor's office in Hotton this morning. They're expecting her in before nine. Oh, I. Hardly back five minutes and uh, you're stuck in the corner together. Mm. <laughs> Does Chris know? Sorry, uh, you said informal. I forgot myself. You're a man of the world, Terry. Am I? Laura's been having a few problems. I'm going to give her some moral support. I didn't realise. No reason why you should. Is she OK? It's rather delicate. She's uh, been having some uh, ladies' problems. Oh, right. Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> we'd best get cracking. Don't want to hit the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> we can rely on your absolute discretion. Me? I'm sorry I asked. I haven't seen either of you all day. <laughs> A shelf stacker? You are joking. I don't think so. You've got an interview at 12 o'clock to get your suit aired. Kelly, you can't just go around organising my life for me. Well, someone's got to. I told you things were going to change around here. There are jobs in this paper. Pay jobs. And you're going to have one of them by the end of the day if it kills me. Maybe I'll just stay in then. Oh, if that's the way you feel. Can you not take a joke? Yeah, I should be able to. A married one. Kelly, just put yourself in my situation. Would you be happy going out stacking shelves? I am not happy filing bits of paper, answering telephones and putting up with wally wagon drivers. But I have to do it because we need the money. It's not the same. Why can't you see it as a beginning? They're always training people up to do other things in these supermarkets. You could end up as a manager. Do you think they'll let me use tills as well? I really want this marriage to work, Roy, but I feel like I'm putting everything in and it ain't fair. All right, I'll go do the interview. I won't even get it. It's up to you. I just want us to be happy. I said I'd do it. <laughs> Can we have some more coffee in here, please, Cheryl? I thought you'd gone. Still waiting patiently. I think you need to update your magazine collection. I've got nothing to say to you. But you go back to your client. I'm quite happy here with Beryl. Cheryl. Cheryl! Suit yourself. Hey, Parker. Hang on a minute. Oh, I wish I hadn't made those jokes at Biff now. It'd be nice to hear them all for the first time. She made a pass at you yet. Where does she take you? I'm not driving for her today. Oh, funny. I've never seen a car like this in the catalogue. She told me to take it out for a spin, OK? What do you want, Marlon? Virginia's address. Hey, her and me might just have been a one-night stand, but you've been a bit quick, aren't you? Adam's humiliated her. And Tricia. Well, if those two want their eyes open about what sort of bloke Adam is, all they've got to do is open their eyes. But he's made... He's made a fool out of both of them. From what I can remember of the party, she ended up with a babe magnet anyway. Did she? Who? Me, you dipstick. Come on, Terry, we're all mates with Tricia. If she likes Adam that much, she's not going to have a word said against him. I should know. I used to feel the same way about her once. And I'm not going to help you make her feel like an idiot. Sorry. Well, Kelly has got a point. I was hoping he'd say no. How can I stop you going for an interview when I can't even pay you properly myself? And I'd be gutted to lose you, but you wouldn't thank me if Kelly did a bunk over it. Yeah, I suppose. So, uh, did you manage to get shut her down yesterday? I don't know if she makes half those stories up, but she had me in creases. Said I might go down to the Woolly tonight for a drink. Ooh, I'll cut you. You'll be out clubbing next, lad. Hardly. But, uh, what do we do if I see Sarah again? I'll just ignore him. From what I've heard, she don't go out much anyway. Uh, too busy having a good time stopping in. Oh, it's a bit sad if you ask me. What? 
Well, she's meant to be having such a great time. She's never looked very happy when I see her. <laughs> Do you need of you? Do I have a what? Boyfriend. Are you being fruity? N no, I just thought we should try all our conversation in Spanish. We haven't even mastered where's the donkey ride yet. Hey, don't put yourself down. You're doing very well indeed. Am I better than Benice? OK, sorry about the bacon. Can you have a fried egg instead? Honestly, there's one day driving posh totty and he gets all bossy. Hey, I'm warning you, son. Don't push it, Mark. You haven't bought a thing since you got here. Look, I'll shop today. Are you two going to be in tonight? Bet he's planning a wild party now. Uh, no, I'm not. Honestly, I just started clean while you were out. Listen, Carlos, good luck with the diner, eh? Hey, um, hang on a minute. What? Well, I was just wondering uh, how things were going, <clears throat> generally, with Adam and that. Suddenly everybody's interested in me love life. All right, I know he's a bit posher than me. Oh, oh, I'm not having a go. Well, you better not be, cos I'm really happy. We're just jealous of him, that's all. Men, you've got one track mind. Dirt track. I'll see you tomorrow for Spanish. It's just that my lot of things. I know, he's been on at me and all. So, are you two going to be out or what? Bye. I thought you had the patience of a saint. I didn't lie to you, Laura. I only heard from Michael's solicitor about the settlement yesterday. He's trying to cheat me out of five million pounds. Is it too much to ask that I should have a few hours? Is it too much to ask that you should be straight with me instead of playing stupid little games? You knew I was doing business on your behalf all day yesterday. I took several calls and Chris is desperate to get in on the act. That's wonderful news. That's possible business for both of us. This problem with Michael might just be a hiccup. Being five million down is a bit more than a hiccup. You can't just jolly hockey stick your way out of this. Chris will think he's got every right to treat me like a joke now. We made a muggle once too often by you lot and I'm sick of it. Chris behaved appallingly towards you at Oakwell. Apart from my lack of candour yesterday, I've always treated you with respect. When it suits. I'm begging you, Laura. What exactly do you want from me? Is there any chance of borrowing the car? I'm going to go crackers if I don't go out soon. I've got to go away for a while. It's an IT conference. Where? Scotland. But you can't. I won't have anyone to talk to if you're not here. You can't leave me alone. You're coming with me. I am. <laughs> yeah, I've already cleared it with Chris. Conference only take a few days and I've wangled some holiday time on the end of it. It's cheap and cheerful, Sarah, but at least it's away. Oh, Richie. That's brilliant. I just thought with the kids in Spain, you know, you're sick of being stuck in here all day. I'll go and pack. Oh, we're not going till tonight. Well, it's something to do. I do love you. And I promise, as soon as we're away from here, things will be different. I told Chris you were on fairly good terms with Michael. Physical abuse isn't something you brag about to your acquaintances, Laura. Michael was all smiles at first. But in the end, he couldn't cope with me loving Biff. You chose him over Biff. I went for something I knew would be more comfortable. When the reality of that sunk in, and nasty. Where is he now? The Riviera, spending my settlement, I would imagine. I know things were difficult when your dad died, but I don't remember you being penniless when you went into this marriage. I stupidly let him have control of my money as well. <sighs> you really can pick up. He was hitting me, Laura. I'm terrified of him. I thought if I gave in over the money, this letter's a standard bullying tactic. Let's face it, he's not going to cough for five million quid without a struggle. Now, have you got anything you can fall back on while you fight this? Nothing, really. He's a very clever man, then. You're not going to get your settlement without legal help, and you won't get that unless you can pay. Welcome to the real world, Lady Tara. <laughs> Table, 
more, please, Betty? Only 30 seconds to grand opening. <laughs> this place has had more openings than the mousetrap. <laughs> Hey, folk voted for you, councillor, so let's see your caring face. Yeah, both of them. You've been meddling with these menus again. No, they're supposed to be standing up. So, Eric, what do you make of the new decor? Better get the paint. Toxic dump. I'm going to serve these headaches, don't stop. I meant more the colour. Well, it's nice if you like, common. <laughs> Kathy's going to regret it when she sees it. Stop stirring at you. I mean it, Betty. I'm coming to the end of what's been a very generous tether. Three, two, one. Welcome all. <laughs> one dingle in the Zimmer frame, sisters. <laughs> Excellent start. Show these ladies to a table, please, Betty. I am, I am. Lunch is on the house for the first two customers. I hope you're paying, though, Marlon. Maybe later. Thanks to work with Carlos. Uh, Marlon. Forget it. The, the supermarket want to go ahead with the marketing. Pies, so um, all you have to do is just uh, hand over the recipe. So my hard work can have your name on it. You tried to do me over with them pies, so I'm afraid I've had to withdraw my fillings. Before you start, me and Terry have both asked Trisha about Adam. We've done our bit. And? Her exact words were, I'm dead happy. Sorry, mate, you're on your own. Hey, Carlos. If you're interested in me for my pie recipes, I you can... I don't could... suppose the Spanish are very big in the pasty world, eh? Have you really got a supermarket interested in a deal? <laughs> it's an opportunity going begging. We can't have that, can we? I'll think about it, Eric. If the price is right. Well, I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement. Uh, when can I sample your wares? <sighs> OK, the house and its contents. Just. Surrounding a few acres, uh, two horses and the stables. Rather dilapidated. Is that it? Our rest is dead. If I sell any more horses, I'll have nothing at all to offer as investment. I know stud work. It's something I can do, and I really do want to work, Laura. Whatever you think, I'm prepared to do a lot more than sit on my backside waiting to go bankrupt. So why can't you borrow enough to expand? Because the stables as they are couldn't handle it. And if I try to raise enough money to renovate, then everyone will find out that I'm... My loans will be called in, and that'll be that. Have you thought of taking in washing? <laughs> Talk to Chris for me? Nah, he'd only be good for a hundred thousand or so. If we can convince him that with my horses as a start and some Tate money... I've seen the way he is with Zoe. Yeah, you and Chris are two of a kind. Stamp your little feet till you get your own way. Hasn't worked with Michael. Then let's hope for your sake the Chris throws a better tantrum than you. OK. I'll propose you set up your stud work at home farm. Three-way partnership. You provide the horses and the expertise for starters. They make a cash investment and provide premises as their side. They think I'm sitting on millions. As far as everyone outside this office is concerned, you are. We'll say the stud's more of a... an extravagant hobby for you. Do you think you could swing it? Oh, Zoe, trust me. And for that, I want a cut of any money coming from the Tates. Sounds fair. Of course, it's all rather academic. This firm can't see their way to representing me over the settlement issue. There's no way the firm would allow me to act on a no-win, no-fee basis. And I can't see any other decent lawyer touching it. I'll do it. Outside the firm. Strictly between the two of us. If I fail, I fail. But I'm prepared to try. Wouldn't you get into trouble? Oh, I'd be sacked and possibly debarred, but I think £500,000 would soften the blow, don't you? It's only 10% of what you're expecting to get. I used to think we were friends. Yeah. Sorry to be so vulgar, Tara, but I'm afraid it's either that or Cardboard City for you. Check from school. Good. The other's out? Yeah. I'm not doing everything, mind Mark. I'm asking you to. Good. She's a lovely old bird. But I could wring her neck. 
She's devastated that we've done so well, you know. I only wanted to serve you yet. Trish, yeah. Virginia? No, it's just an unexpected surprise. Tomorrow night? Well, you know me. Of course I fancy it. Look, can I uh, give you a ring back later on? Good. Bye. It might look as though we've done a bomb, but it's all fair coping, no, Nick. I've only sold a couple of Spanish puddings. I don't know what you mean, Betty. This food's fantastic. I'm oh, sure of you. Betty! Diane! It was on the phone. Uh, a client. <clears throat> I've got to do an op on a bull tomorrow night. Oh, can I come with you? I don't think you could stomach it. And you're on call tonight? Yeah, sorry. I don't know why you put up with me, Tricia. You are a lovely girl. Well, that makes two of us. Except you're a bloke. There you go. Help yourself to sugar. I must say, I'm not very happy about the practice giving you my address. Uh, I snuck in the surgery and looked you up. I probably should have called first. Well, you're here now. It's not that I didn't have a good time with Terry, but you're right about Adam. He needs to be taught a lesson. No one makes a fool out of me. You and Trisha both. Well, I suppose. You do wonder if girls like her feel things the same as other women do. <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean? Well, you know, sort of bimbo types. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Adam. Glad you could sneak away. <laughs> yeah. It'll be about half an hour. You can go to the pub later if you want. So, how'd the interview go? Ah, near won't get it. You might have had a chance if you even bothered to turn up. So you're checking up on me now? I phoned him from work so I could get the email address for this. What is it? Only a CV I've spent half the day sneaking about to do. I thought it might help you. I've had no dinner. Can't do the portions then. Sometimes I really hate you, Roy. You just love showing me up. I'm working my backside off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's always about you, innit? Well, it might be soon, so you don't start pulling your weight. You're going to dump me because I'm unemployed? Deliberately unemployed. There's loads of jobs you could get. Running away to slag me off with Trisha, eh? No, I'm going to go get a job. Well, licking the roads clean will do as long as it pays. Oh, I thought you were stopping out. Oh, we're a bit sharp with you this morning. Let's get stuck into this. Hi, Terry. Do you know who her mother is, you wazzock? Donna, home now. Oh, don't be like that. Anna, may I suggest that you dress yourself properly? What are you getting so aerated about? We were only necking. Tell that to Viv. Some passion session that was. Thanks very much. Not to my room. Yeah, well, while you're there, you can pack your bags. Hey. Look, eating everything I can handle. But setting up a teenage knocking shop with Donna Windsor, I don't know who's going to kill me first, her mum or yours. Well, I can't go home, Terry. Of course you can. You're an insult to the proper homeless. Well, at least give me some food. I'm starving. Fancy a knuckle sandwich? You know, they're right what they say about you. You are a loser. Yeah. A loser with a takeaway. Have a nice life. Ladies, do come again. Well, I was beginning to think them two were stuck in the chairs. Oh, I thought that was a lovely gesture, Diane. Aye, and it's not like they're like gannets. They only cost us coppers. You are the bombs. Here, we've done a roaring trade. The food went down a bomb and um, everybody commented on the service, Betty. I was doing my best. You're a defensive old biddy. I meant it as a compliment. That's a bonus. What did you just call me? It was only a turn of phrase. 
There's now told about me, and does Cathy know you're giving her money away? I could understand you complaining if it was coming out your own purse. Right. I'm off, if it's all right with you two. Yeah, well, there's a tidying up to do. You said you'd finish off. I said I would lock up. There are two of us, Betty. Right. That's it. Go home. Thanks, I will. And don't bother coming back tomorrow. We'll do better without you. You've been a pain in the neck all day. And I'll take that back as well. That was out my own pocket. Why should I? Taking money off pensioners now? You weren't even old two minutes ago. I'm sorry, Betty, but if you stay, I'll have to kill you myself. So, you've formed an inhumane alliance, have you? Well, it's better than being called a tart. If the wig fits. Well below the belt. I don't envy you two when Cathy gets back. What are you looking at? Nothing at all. Well, you can stay for one night, but that's it. Yeah, OK. I can't believe Terry would just kick you out like that. A kid your age. I'm not that young. Well, you must have had a reason. I was just entertaining Donna. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I think you just felt a bit threatened by my success with women. Well, tomorrow you can go and apologise to Terry, then try and make it up with your mum and dad. You need to sort yourself out, Mark. Yeah, well, I'll do anything you say. Well, do you mind not staring at me chests, then, please? Sorry. I'm really sorry, Trish. I didn't even realise I was doing it. It's all right. It's just that we get a bit creepy, that's all. Right. You hungry? Yeah, I'm starving. Will crisp bread do? Your tea's ready. You know, I'm really grateful for you helping out, Roy. I'm uh, on my way around the car on that, but... Yeah, but it's a pity you want this one. Yeah, fair enough. So how much money do you want, then? I'll take you not doing it as a favour. Half. Half of what? Whatever comes in. I'm not working for you, Scott. This is a partnership. I want half the profits. Are you coming back? <laughs> oh, I'll be in first thing tomorrow. Tickets still need me. Is this a wind-up? I know you're desperate. I'm not. Mm. All right, yeah. Yeah, I am. Right, then. I'll see you in the morning. Dr. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> 